Hallelujah. I can only hear a few living souls. Hallelujah. Amen. If you know you are grateful to God that you are alive today, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. All right, I would like you to take a few seconds to ask the Lord to send this word to you. As we are about to hear the word of the Lord, can you ask the Lord to send his word to you in particular? God doesn't send his word to a group. He sends his word to an individual. And the word of the Lord that Isaiah saw, and the word of the Lord came to Amos in the field as he was shepherding. The word of the Lord comes to individual. Allow the Lord to release his word to you today. Ask God to send his word to you. You know, when God is dealing with people, he doesn't deal with a group. He deals with individual. Otherwise, all those people that were touching him could have been healed. But there was just an individual in that meeting that day, a woman with the issue of blood, as we describe her, she touched and she was healed. Ask that you will touch Christ this morning. Ask that you will touch his word this morning. Ask that you will be visited this morning. Ask the Lord that your coming to this chapel today will not be in vain. That you will go home transformed. You will go home impacted. You will go home blessed. You will go home lifted. You will go home healed. You will go home delivered. You will go home sanctified. You will go home blessed in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. This morning, very quickly, I want to complete the section we've been dealing with on our breaking new grounds. We've been talking about the path to breaking new ground. And we have shared, I think, about three or four in that uh, series now. So today I want to complete that section before we move to another section. And I'm talking today on the power of dream. The power of dream. You must believe that your dream is possible. I'm trusting the Lord that the part I want to emphasize today will actually be the one that will shift you from where you are at the moment to where God actually wants you to be. The power of dream. The Bible says in Joel chapter 2 and verse 28 that it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. It shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. The Bible says, your sons and daughters will see visions, and your hood men shall dream dream. Now, many people have come to interpret that passage as, you know, dream belong to the old people because they sleep a lot. That's not what the Bible is saying. Actually, in that passage, the interpretation is both the dream and the vision, they are talking about the same thing. So one of the benefits of the last days and one of the things that the Holy Spirit does in the midst of his people is to impact you with a vision and a dream. Dream is powerful because it is domiciled in a section of our life that we all have as a gift from God. And the devil also understands the dynamics. So he also travels to that section of our life to bath his own dream and his own vision through individuals. It shall come to pass in the last days that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And by the power of that spirit, you'll be able to dream you'll be able to have a vision. You'll be able to visualize what can be and what ought to be. You'll be able to visualize. So dream is powerful. In Isaiah chapter 11 from verse 1, the Bible says a root will come out of the stem of Jesse and the spirit of the Lord will rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom and the spirit of cancer. When you read other translations, the spirit of cancer is actually talking about 
the spirit of vision, the spirit that can pass dream in your heart. That's what the Holy Spirit does. It gives dream. It gives vision. But there is something I want to emphasize this morning, which I'm trusting that at the end of this service, we will all resume in prayer to deliver ourselves from such manipulation. If you are going to catch a dream, actually, a dream is the ability to picture a future and to retain it in the now. That is a dream. That is a vision. You are able to capture a future. Of course, I'm talking about a glorious future. And you are able to retain that picture in the now. And you are living in the picture of the future as if it is a reality. That is a dream. That is a dream. And so in Genesis chapter 37, verses 5 and 9. In verse 5 of Genesis 37, the Bible says, Joseph, a guy of a 17 years old, had a dream. And what was the dream? He had a dream that he was a king and people were paying homage to him. He actually saw 12 entities bowing down to him. By the interpretation of the family member, they concluded that, do you mean me and your father and your siblings will be bowing down to you? You are almost like the last born. That was the dream he had. The dream of greatness. The dream of royalty. The dream of kingship. The dream of rulership. That was the dream he had. And the Bible says, I think in verse 6, he was hated because of his dream. Because that dream transformed his worldview, transformed his perception about life. That dream transformed the way he conducted himself. They could not begin to see that he was living differently as if he was a king. So the Bible says they hated him because of his dream. As if that was not enough, in verse 9, the Bible says, and he dreamt again. And, and so out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, the truth shall be established. By having that dream twice, it means that the reality is there. That was exactly what he later told Pharaoh. He said, by having this kind of dream twice, it means that it has been concluded in the heavens that that will come to pass. Now, can I tell you, friends... Apart from the fact that the Holy Spirit enables you to have a picture of a future and retaining the same for the now, every individual under heaven has or possess the ability to dream. And you don't need to sleep before you dream. It is not actually the product of a deep sleep. Every, listen to me this morning. Every individual under the surface of the earth has the ability to dream. The only difference is when you are a believer, the Holy Spirit produces an inspired, divine, enabled dream that will launch you into the plan and purpose of God for your life. If you are otherwise, then there is that guy at the other side to perpetuate the same. Because the platform that the Holy Spirit will use to birth a dream in your life is the same platform that the devil will use to birth a dream in your life. That is why you've got to be careful how you engage that platform. And I tell you this morning what that platform is. And it is called imagination. Everybody say imagination. Imagination is a gift given by God to everybody. Everyone listening to me this morning, you have the gift of imagination. So imagination is domiciled in your mind. 
your mind resides in your soul. Your soul is the second component of your, of your life. You are a spirit man, you possess a soul, and you dwell in the body. Three components. That's why we call you a tripartite being. So within the component of your soul, we have your mind. Within your mind, there is a tablet. There is a platform that we call imagination. It is there. It is there. Now, when you catch a dream from either side, it is registered on that tablet that we call imagination. And the moment it is registered in the imagination, then the possibility of normalization is already registered. It's already registered. That is why God in Genesis chapter 11, he came down. He looked at the children of men and he discovered that they have decided by the power of imagination, they have decided that they are pursuing a dream and that dream was to build a tower that will reach to heaven. And God said, since they have decided to do this and this is registered in their imagination, I've got to do something now. And what God did was to destroy the platform called imagination so that they could not actualize that dream. You know what we happened this morning? Some of you, your imagination is loaded with all kind of evil activities, thoughts, desires, plans. And unless such imagination is destroyed, you don't have any other opportunity to birth a positive dream. And so you must allow the Lord this morning to deal with your imagination so that you can birth a great dream. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I think that is even enough a message for anyone who can decode and interpret. For you to know that you are in a war. And that is a war of imagination. Can I tell you how this thing works? I should tell you how it works. It doesn't respect anybody. It works for Jesus. Jesus was in the wilderness. And the devil came. And said, can you turn this stone to bread? You think the devil appeared to Jesus and they were conversing physically? No. It was at the realm of imagination. Can you convert this stone to bread since you are a child of God and you have the power to do all things in the realm of the imagination? But because Jesus' mind is transformed and is renewed, he could discern that this is not in alignment with the will of God and it challenged the devil back that it cannot be that way. It cannot be that way. Praise God. Do you know how some people rape? They have looked at the nakedness of a lady. They have watched pornography. And it has registered in their imagination. And because imagination must produce fruit, must produce result. So they are looking for the actualization. That is what leads to rape. You don't just rape. Just in a day, you must have loaded your tablet with a lot of stuff. Then you now move on to actualize it. In the same way. In the same way. Do you know how the building came to be? An architect sat down, engaged the power of imagination. If it's like this, if you do it this way, if you do it this way, and from that, they were penning it down, sketching it and all that. And they brought in, you know, a structural engineer, can this thing stand like this? Can it work this way? Can, and, they want, and that is how we have this chapel. So I ask you this morning, what are you using your imagination for? What are you using your imagination for? Now look at what somebody said. Somebody said, you can be anything you want to be if you only believe with sufficient conviction and act in accordance with your faith, where I'm going is this, for whatever the mind can conceive and believe, the mind can achieve. The mind can achieve. For whatever the mind can conceive and believe, 
the mind can achieve. So my emphasis this morning is on the mind. Is on the mind. And I want to show you two scriptures, and we are going to pray based on those two scriptures. So that as you are seated, you will look at yourself as a very powerful man. Tell yourself, I'm powerful. Because I have something within me that is so much powerful. So much powerful. And I pray you begin to engage such today. Why at the same time I pray that some people will be delivered from the enslavement, from the devil who has taken over that region of their life, your mind. Turn your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 2 and verse, Ephesians chapter 3, sorry, and verse 20. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20. Look at what God himself said by the inspiration of the Spirit. God is able to do what? Can we have it on the screen? God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask. Or what? Or what? I want a version that I use or imagine. That is the version that I use or imagine, right? Can we have it, NIT? NIV? Can we have it? Can you give us NIV on the screen very quickly? Is that NIV? Okay, can we have it here? Yeah? Who has NIV? Okay, can you read, please? I will echo it. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than we ask or imagine according to his power, not outside you, but working where? Working where? Fear every man being you see around. Fear him. Oh. He can imagine anything. He can imagine anything. Those who rob, they first started by imagining. They can imagine anything. So the question is, what exactly are you imagining now? They can imagine anything. If you understand the power of imagination, and it's not outside you, it's within you, and you begin to engage that power of imagination, the Bible says, even God supersedes whatever you can imagine. See, as I'm talking to you, I can see the imagine that I'm traveling in this space to the U.S. right now. You can't see my mind, but that's what I'm thinking about. In 2003, I had a problem with my car. Then I was using Audi 100, and it was giving me issues. So I took it to a mechanic workshop in Rumola under bridge before Hotel Presidential. So we queued because you have to queue. I got there late. So while they were working on my vehicle, I got tired of that vehicle. And that was the era of Mazda 626. That was when Mazda 626 came on board. So I walk into a car dealer very close to that workshop. And I enter as if I wanted to buy a vehicle. So the man saw me and said, oh, you are welcome, Oga. You want to buy a vehicle? I said, yes. He said, which one do you want? I said, I want Mazda 626. And he said, come, let me show you one. He said, I just brought this car. Oga, I tell you, if you buy this car and you travel from Poraco to Kano, you will not hear, Shep. The engine is good. And it started the engine. And water started coming out. So my eyes caught that Mazda. And he said, are you not ready? I said, I will get back to you in a few days' time. How much? He said, if you have your cash, I will give you 550. If you don't have your cash, I will give you 600. I said, I will get back to you. So I post out of that place like somebody who has the cash to buy the vehicle. That was 2004, sorry, 2004. So my ordination was drawing closer. And a member of my church came to my house and said, yeah. by that time I sold off, I sold off that car. I just sold it off because it's giving me trouble. So he came and said, Pastor, why did you say it was giving me issue? He said, if they ask you today, what kind of car do you want? What will you say? Mazda 626. <laughs> <laughs> I said, Mazda 626. He said, ah, but Mazda, no problem. I said, no, I want Mazda 626. In fact, 
I remember that time, there is a brother in Lautek, uh, Professor Ogunle. I remember that time. That was when they stole his Mazda 626. And a brother in my church, who is his friend, told me, I said, ah, Mazda 626, because it was very, it was in vogue that time. Then no, I want Mazda 626. He said, okay. Few days after, he came back and said, Pastor, do you see, do you see one Mazda 626? I said, he was convincing me. I said, no, I said, I want Mazda 626. He said, okay, let's go out together. It was during his break. So he took me in his car, and we went to, you know, that inner side of Paracot, where they sell cars. So we are pricing it. The one with AC, the one without AC, lift back, saloon type, and all that. And we are pointing, ah, and they were giving us very high price, 750, 850, 700. He said, okay, I just want us to have the idea of the market price and all that. So I said, I, said, I have a place. Let me show you a place. So I took him to that place. Fortunately, the car was still there. And the man said, oh, Oga, you have come to pick it. And my church member said, have you been here before? I said, don't mind him. You know, I just, I came to service my car here and I entered this place. And, and so we examined it. Ah, and he said, Pastor, that car is good though. He said, the car, the engine is sand. He said, okay. Within me, Mazda 626 is already registered. And I could not be persuaded otherwise. You know what happened? This man went and pulled other five, six members together. And I think it would be a good thing to buy a car for our pastor during his ordination. So they didn't let me know, but they told me later. So he gathered them. They put together 100, 100, 100, 100, 100,000. 600,000. And they went there and picked that same car. The picture is already registered in my spirit. And they pick that same Mazda 626. On the day of ordination, they pack it outside. Everybody was wondering, who has this new car? But I know that I have it. <laughs> <laughs> I was also told, I said, ah, now wow, who has this car? You know, but I know that it's mine already. <laughs> Praise God. To cut the long story short, that is how they gave me that vehicle. When I drove that vehicle into my compound, my neighbor said, ah, pastor, who owns this car? I said, it's mine. He said, how? Oh. I said, that is it. God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, far above what you can ever imagine. What you can ever imagine. What you can ever imagine. I'm telling you the power of imagination so that you will stop all this rubbish of imagining things that are negative, that are not pure, that are not noble. Imagine things. Imagine that you will build a company. Imagine that you will build an application. Imagine that you will be a top-notch lecturer. Imagine that you will be a CEO. Instead of imagining all this stuff, drinking and, and, and smoking all kind of chunks about, let your mind produce something that will benefit the world. Let your mind produce something that will accelerate you, that will move you forward. See, I have tested this thing and it works. That's what I use for my life. I just enter into the realm of imagination, back it up with the word of God, and it produces result. You know, in 2012, somebody picked out my Mazda 626 without my knowledge, took it out, ram it on another vehicle, and the car was gone. In fact, we eventually sold that car at 50,000 naira. Oh, yes, to some people in gate in Nevada there. Because you got it's beyond repair. But you see, when that happened, and we met in my office and we were talking, and my team member was asking me, Reverend, if they, what kind of car do you think? I said, I want Sienna. I said, I have a dream of a Sienna. So that when we are traveling for meeting, we can carry books, we can carry everything. But you see, at that time, there is no way I can produce money for Sienna. But I said I have this dream of a Sienna. So whenever I'm going and I see somebody driving Sienna before me, it just catches my attention. <laughs> Praise the Lord. One day, I was in UI. In, uh, I think they call it First Bank Hall or something like that. 
around maybe College of Agreek. They named it First Bank Hall. We were there. We were planning the program. We wanted to use that hall. So we saw an advert. Somebody said, if you need a Sienna, call this number. So kind they said, sir, I, I thought you said you need a Sienna. Let's call this number. <laughs> Praise God. So we called that number. It happens to be Professor what now uh, in UCH? Arotiba or so. That, that's the name, Professor Arotiba. You know, we called the number. We said, sir, we saw an advert here pasted that you want to dispose of Sienna. We are interested. He said, are you, really, are you really in need of that? I said, yes, we are interested. Can we meet tomorrow? I will describe the place where the vehicle is, blah, blah, and you go there. So we went there. I brought a mechanic. We went there. The vehicle was clean. The vehicle was neat, you know. So we called back. We have seen the vehicle. How much do you want to? He said he was giving it out 850. No, no less, no. He said 850, no negotiation, nothing. I told kind there, I said, we will get this vehicle. Praise the Lord. They drove it. The AC is working, everything. The gear perfect. We put on the stereo and I already assumed that it's mine. <laughs> Praise God. I already know that it's mine. You know what? This thing is powerful. The Bible says God is able to do exceedingly abundantly far above all that you can ever ask or imagine according to his power that is at work in you, not outside you. Do you know what? As soon as we left you high, a woman called me and said, Reverend, I learned that your vehicle had an issue. So what is your next plan? I said, Ma, Actually, the next car that is useful for us now is Sienna. So we are planning to get a Sienna. He said, ah, who was Sienna work for? You know? I said, we have gotten one actually, and he said around 50,000. I said, okay, I will be able to give 500,000. That is how the woman forwarded 500,000 naira to me. Immediately, I forwarded it straight to the account of that prof. We are looking for how much? 350,000 naira. I remember as I was coming out of the bank that morning, a friend called me and said, blah, 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 blah. Do you still use your account, uh, your first bank account with this DJ, blah, blah? I said, yeah. He said, I want to forward something to you. And he forwarded 300,000 naira to me. Making how much? 800,000. Remaining what? Uh, the remaining 50,000 from a friend. And that's how we pull out that car from where it was parked. I remember when I brought that car to our church compound, my reference said, ah, a dirty man tell no more see now. A dirty man tell no more see now. You've been talking about see now. That's how God is here now. God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, far above all that we can think or imagine according to his power that is at work in all. Now let me hand this way. Why are you finding it difficult to imagine great things? Why are you finding it difficult to imagine godly things? To it is because possibly your mind is already locked up with bad stuff. And you've got to do something about it today. So 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 from verse 4. Let's pick it from there so that we can just pray and run. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. From verse 4. Are you giving it to us, media? 2 Corinthians chapter 10. From verse 4. Can I have it from anybody here? All right. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. From verse 4. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. Go ahead, please. Verse 5. We demolish argument and every pretension that set itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every what? The word thought there is actually the word imagination. And we take into captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. To make it obedient to Christ. You've got to take captive all the negative thoughts in your mind today and make them obedient 
to Christ. So that your mind can begin to work for the correct purpose and the correct assignment. So that your mind, imagine that our world, everybody is engaging the imagination for the good purpose. Our world will be better. Yesterday I was watching the new invention by China. They want to release their electric car into the world. And they were showing a documentary about it is put together, they will be charged. I told my wife, I said, China want to release electric car. Here, we are cutting our head. We are cutting one another's head. We are kidnapping people. We are, you know, breaking into houses. We are, our brain is locked up with terrible imagination. So we cannot think of anything. Our roads are bad. Our environment is disorganized. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I was coming from somewhere on Saturday, and I saw their FM station, and I saw the front, they are loaded with trash. I said, how can the front of organization be, I can't just imagine my mind. I can't imagine that I'm the manager of that station, and I will drive in, and I will see all this kind of heap of trash. Abba, something is wrong with your mind. Your mind is perverted. There is no excellence driving your mind. If excellence is driving your mind, you cannot just stand any disorganized environment. You can't stand it. Your mind has a problem. Can I tell you, friends? If you go out of your house and your shoe is dirty, it's a sign that your mind has a problem. Oh, yes. Your clothes is roughened. We enter your car. The whole car is dirty. All the mat, the foot mat, they are full of sand. Something is wrong with your mind. Oh, yes, something's wrong. That is not how God wants the mind to produce. The Bible says, oh, Lord, our God, how excellent is your name in all the earth. That is why you see the beauty of the universe. God is an excellent God. So you are going to challenge your mind this morning. Anything less than excellence. Let me give you this scripture. Philippians chapter 4. Then you are going to pray based on the parameters that are listed here. Philippians chapter 4 from verse 8. Finally, brothers, whatever is what? Whatever is what? Media, are you giving it to us? Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is what? Is what? And praiseworthy. Do what? Meditate. Think on this thing. So what are you thinking about? Now I asked you, what is your mind engaged in? Would you like to tell the Lord and say, Lord, walk on my mind. I give you three minutes to speak to God. Walk on my mind. Oh, can you imagine that the whole 5,000 students on this campus begin to engage their mind? Our campus will be transformed. People will enter this. They will say, this is a hub. This is a hub of innovation. This is a hub of creativity. This is a hub of invention. We can deal with crime on this campus. If every mind is working well, how can you imagine that somebody forgets his phone in the chapel and is gone? You put your clothes on the line, it's gone. Somebody's mind is not working well. Somebody's mind is not working well. How can you take, you know, something to the exam hall? Somebody, somebody's mind is not working well. Somebody's mind is not working well. Can you begin to ask the Lord? Can you begin to ask the Lord? Lord, work on my mind. Work on my mind. I want my mind to produce godly results. Something that is good, something that is excellent, something that is admirable, something that is praiseworthy. I want you to begin to cast down every thought. Cast down every thought. Cast down every, I want you to pray loud. Shout at the devil. Cast down that negative thought. That, that thought of worry, anxiety. That thought of depression. That thought of stealing. That thought of smoking. That thought of fighting. That thought of malice. That thought of jealousy. Cast it down. They are not of God. They are not excellent. Cast it down. That habit of disorganization, that habit of, that, that makes you to always look dirty, unorganized. You won't comb your hair. You won't brush your mouth. You won't polish your shoe. They are not of God. That is not excellence. 
They are not excellent. Cast those imaginations down. Cast them down this morning. Cast them down. God wants to produce something great through your mind. God wants to change the world through you. God wants to pass an invention through you. Make your mind available. Make your mind available. Plead the blood of Jesus over your mind. Everything that has occupied your mind that is preventing the inspiration from above, cast it down. Cast it down. You have the power. The power is within you. The Bible says, according to the power that is at work within us, that power is at work within you. It is not outside you. You can destroy the argument. You can destroy everything that is raising itself above the plan, above the purpose, above the cancer of God. You can cast them down. They can go down today. Hallelujah. Let me quickly pray for some people here this morning. You are telling the Lord, God, I want to rise beyond where I am. I want a baby that will come out of my mind. I want an invention. The Bible says that which shall be born of you shall be called the child of the most high. And you want the light of God to break through into your mind. Can you please quickly rise up on your feet and let me just join you in prayer as I release the grace of God upon your life. Father, I am standing here today as these other people are standing. We want to change our world. We want to transform our world. We want to move our world forward to excellence. So, Father, lift up your hands, everybody, as if you are catching something from heaven. Father, this morning we receive from you the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of understanding, and of the fear of the Lord. The Bible says you will make us of a quick understanding. We decree right now, let our mind be quick in, in the mighty name of Jesus. Every thought of failure, every thought of inferiority, every thought of impossibility, every thought of unbelief, every thought of I can't, in the name of Jesus, we crush you today. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Can we celebrate the Lord together? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen.